Hi, and today is the 13th of June and it's 2020. We are continuing with the gospel according to John. And yesterday we were looking at chapter 10 where we were speaking about Jesus being the good shepherd. The good shepherd that lays his life for his sheep. When he, he brings the sheep in the fold, when he brings them in the pen, he lies at the gate to protect the sheep. He is the good shepherd who leads them in the greener pastures where they can eat and then he leads them into the coolness of the waters, the quiet waters where they can drink and have their thirst quenched. He is a good shepherd in the way he protects those ones that are sick and ill. He is a good shepherd in the way he goes after the one sheep that may leave the fold. So he's a good shepherd and that's where we left the story yesterday. But even though he's a good shepherd, there are those who still don't believe that he's a good shepherd. There are those who don't believe he is the one who says he is. I mean, he's the one who says who he is, that he's one with the father. So we saw that there were conflicts among the Pharisees and there were those disciples also who didn't believe exactly who Jesus was saying he is, but he remains to be Jesus, the son of God, the good shepherd, the bread of life, the one who promises us the way and he is the way that leads us. So he's not just my personal savior, he is the savior. Today we're looking at chapter number 11 and it starts very interestingly. It's one of the stories that when I returned to God when I was drawn back to my Savior, to the Savior. It's one of the stories I was reminded, and it's the story of Lazarus. So Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. Not that we are not friends of Jesus, but there was a close relationship. They knew each other as people would know each other within the community. So Jesus was a friend of Lazarus. He also, he was also a friend of the sisters of Lazarus, that is Martha and Mary. And here we come across where Lazarus has been dead for four days. And the sisters are asking Jesus to come. Before he died, they did send for him, but he didn't arrive until four days later when he was already buried. But guess what happens? Jesus reminds the sisters that he is the resurrection and therefore Lazarus is asleep and he's going to wake up. And wake up he did. Now, one of the things that I got from these, the revelation I got is when Jesus called out Lazarus, the dead man, he asked the people to unwrap him. And of course, they would unwrap him from the head down to the body because people used to be wrapped around with the linen clothes, the grave clothes. Jesus asked people to do that. But it's Jesus who called the dead man. And one of the things, again, the revelation I get from here is it doesn't matter how dead, how gone you are in your sins. Jesus is able to call you out and resurrect your life to give you life because he is life himself. He is able to call those we think they're not redeemable because when Jesus calls, we wake up from our spiritual slumber. We get healed from our spiritual blindness, like I'd said a day before. Jesus is life himself, but there is a job he's given you and I, and it's to unwrap, to remove the grave clothes. Regardless of how smelly we may think the person is, we remove the grave clothes because Jesus has commanded us to do. And it's our job, you and me, for those who believe in Christ, to disciple others into knowing Christ. And that's one way of removing those death clothes and removing everything that may hinder this person to lead a normal life once again. Yes, Lazarus died, but for this particular instant, he was raised to dead. I mean, he was raised from the dead and he lived a little longer than he would have lived if Jesus didn't come by. So will you and I have an opportunity to be risen to be resurrected by Christ while we have this life? Remember the other day I was talking about we work while it's day, while we have the opportunity, we have that chance to bring people to God, to unwrap them from the grave clothes and to tell them about the goodness of God and how Jesus is the way, the bread of life, the water of life, and how the Holy Spirit guides us and how the word also guides us. 
Now, as he was continuing to do these miracles, and as he was continuing to comfort, yeah, before he brought Lazarus to death, he was also comforting the sisters. So he was um, kind of identifying himself with the feelings that they had. Still, people didn't like this miracle, the miracle, the wonderful miracle that he performed. And they thought, because this man is performing these miracles, everybody will be after him. And therefore, they're going to lose the positions that they have with the Romans and all that. And so they started, the Pharisees and the other leaders started to plot on how to kill Jesus. And Jesus had to go into hiding in a place called Ephraim. He came out of public ministry because his time had not arrived. And as Passover was approaching, they kept asking, have you seen this man, Jesus? If you see this man, Jesus, let us know. Why? Because they were plotting to kill him. Sometimes when people do good, people are never satisfied. There will be haters. There will be those who will be going with their own selfish motives. And they'll be wanting to kill the person that is the good leader. Because they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to know the truth. Maybe because they don't understand the truth. So they will be having those issues, the conflicts and the disputes going within themselves and sometimes spilling this into the public arena. So they are gathering people and telling people that they want to kill Jesus because one, he has identified himself with God and two, because he has performed miracles. And yes, it's one point, there is one point when they ask, Jesus asked them, what is the miracle that you want to kill me for? What is that particular miracle that I performed that you perform that you want to kill me for? But they say, no, no, no. We want to kill you because you are calling yourself a son of God or you're equating yourself to God. So that is blasphemy. But on this particular occasion, it was the miracle of Lazarus being raised to death that really stirred up again the Pharisees and their leaders wanting to kill Jesus. So today I want to encourage you and tell you this, that Jesus still loves you and Jesus calls you out of the depths that you may have sunk. And Jesus gives people around you to help you to learn more about the life that he gives. Guess what? You won't miss out on the enemies who may not want you to prosper, but we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Ultimately, he's the winner man and therefore we win because we are with Jesus. He is the one who spells everything for us, the beginning and the end. We have nothing to fear, not even for the one who will affect this body, but they will not kill our spirit. They do not own our souls. So God bless you and have a wonderful time. And remember, we have a mandate as Christians to bring many more to the knowledge of Christ. We have a mandate to remove those grave clothes from others, but it's the work of Jesus to save and to call people to himself. Keep on scattering the good seeds and the Lord will make them grow and the Lord will bring in the harvest. God bless you as we look forward to doing the next chapter. And that will be, let me have a quick look. That will be chapter number 12, I believe. Yes, we'll be moving on to chapter 12. God bless you and have a wonderful time.